Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Yeehaw, it's a western, baby. Horses are falling from the sky. Sorry for that intro. Welcome to another episode of Dear Blocko. This is the show where I answer your questions about your world and my world. Let's get started with the first question. Starshine asks, Dear Blocko, what happens when a snake bites you? A snake bite? Ouch. I hope you're not asking from personal experience. That's because a snake bite can be pretty dangerous, especially if you're talking about one from a venomous snake. Any snake that bites you should be treated as though it's venomous, and you should get help immediately. Venomous snakes can choose whether or not to actually release their venom. But if they do, those fangs of theirs are going to release different toxins into your body that have varying effects depending on what type of snake bit you. Generally, these toxins can lead to things like local tissue damage or internal bleeding, and can affect your nervous system or directly go after your heart. Paralysis and even death can happen in the worst cases. The main thing about treating a snake bite is to administer the right antivenom as soon as possible. Antivenoms can prevent or even reverse most of the harmful effects of a snake bite, so they're super important. Tito Rodriguez asks, Dear Blocko, why do you laugh and have a funny feeling when you're tickled? Well, it looks like people laugh when they're being tickled as more of a reflex-like behavior than more voluntary laughter, like say, when you laugh at a good joke. Tickling laughter, as we call it, is actually an early form of social communication and vocalization in humans, and other primates too. So it's not that you necessarily find being tickled funny. In fact, many people don't like to be tickled at all, yet still can't help laughing. Recent research has also found that while tickling laughter and voluntary laughter have some similar brain activity going on, one thing that sets tickling laughter apart is that it's more associated with your hypothalamus, and as such, your fight or flight response. And now it's time for questions about me or my world. The Real Lazy Bones asks, Dear Blocko, what are those glitch monsters? I mentioned the corrupted blocky beings in a previous Dear Blocko. My animator informed me that he made a bunch of blocky beings way back in 1997. That's, that's, that's like a thousand years ago, right? He wanted to experiment with different looks and create a whole world of characters, but one character got corrupted and glitched out. It started to infect other beings in the first town that my animator made, and it was all downhill from there. Maybe one day we can figure out a way to turn them back to normal. I'll have to get back to you on that. Yusuf asks, Dear Blocko, have you and your animator had any problems or arguments? We do argue here and there. Animator sometimes is so indecisive. I get annoyed when things change too fast. As I'm walking, he might change the trees. Oop, I guess he didn't like that sky color. Oh, and now I'm floating. I'm kind of like my animator's crash test dummy, except I am no dummy. Uh, hold on guys, my, my animator wants me to test out this new machine, one second. What exactly does this thing do again? Animator? <laughs> animator? Ah! So do you have any questions about your world or my world? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure you use the hashtag DearBlocko so I can find it. Want to watch more Dear Blocko? Check out the previous episode we did. Dear Blocko, could popping pimples kill you? I'm afraid to pop. I feel you, Amber. My adolescent years were the worst. But pimples are actually pretty common and usually aren't that much of a concern. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.